Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, November 1st edition of the OK Preps Extra Podcast. I'm Patrick Prince, joined as always by high school sports editor Barry Lewis and high school sports writer Dean Rule. Guys, last week of the regular season, uh, big games all around. Let's start with what you guys feel are the biggest games this week. Barry, you go first. Well, to me, it's it's a tough call, but I'm going to go with Jenks at Bixby because not every day you've got a nationally televised game in the Tulsa area, high school game, but that's what we've got with uh, Jenks and Bixby. Uh, of course, Bixby finally, as I wrote about today in the top games column, that Bixby, I don't really think it's getting the respect it deserves nationally. And uh, 50, I mean, they've got the nation's longest winning streak, 58 games, and it just, it's not like they're squeaking by every week. <laughs> So this is their national platform where they can make their case that they deserve to be included among the nation's elite because basically they're pretty much getting ignored. And um, of course, then you've got it's Bixby Jenks. And when you look at the last two years, um, Jenks has play has had a, had the ball late in the fourth quarter with a chance to tie. Uh, Bixby's come up with the defensive stands. So I think Jenks would be thrilled if it was in a similar situation in the fourth quarter this time. Um, so Jenks has played Bixby tough. And um, neither of Bixby's quarterbacks have really enjoyed. This is a real oddity. Neither of Bixby's quarterbacks in their previous experience against Jenks has really enjoyed much success against Jenks. So that's also an intriguing part of this. So, you know, it's it's also a matchup of teams that have won state championships the past two years. So you've got that going for it. And on top of that, there is a chance that Jenks could win the district title. Bixby, despite having the 58-game winning streak, still has not officially got that done, got that clinched. So I think there's at least on paper <laughs> that uh you've got to make this the the game of the week and uh i think jenks i don't know if i'd be saying this if jenks hadn't rallied to win against broken arrow last week because that really kept that their rally really elevated this game into the game of the week but i know dean you've got a different feeling well i think uh i think you're 100 right barry this is great for the state it's great for Oklahoma high school football it's great for these programs to get put on a national stage and that's why on Sunday I said you know hey this is a, this is the game of the week but I think you know if, just for argument's sake Stillwater Muskogee uh with both of those teams being undefeated is right up there on the upper echelon uh uh this week in terms of what it means you know like you're saying, Bixby doesn't have the district title wrapped up. Well, neither does Stillwater, who everybody think or who everybody thought would. Uh, Muskogee kind of came out of nowhere, also undefeated nine and zero. So what they've been able to do, I think, it's been one of the the great surprises of this season, or one of the many surprises of this season, uh, with what Muskogee's been able to accomplish, and what kind of you know exclamation mark would it be on this season to come out undefeated with a district title win against Stillwater? Um, so that's why I say, you know, this is, this is every bit as much a game of the week as Jinx Bixby is just in terms of what's on the line and what it means and what it, and then, you know, on the other end, yeah, it'd be great if Muskogee cap, uh, capitalizes and, and ends their surprise, this surprising season of theirs with a district title. But on the other end, you've got Stillwater who's done everything right. And they've lived up to the expectation that they had, um, so you have two very different trajectories meeting, both attempting to achieve the same goal. So no matter how you cut it, it's a great story. Um, and that's why I think it, it's something to pay attention to and watch. And it's it's right up there. While it's not going to be on national TV, it's not on ESPN2. Um, it's every bit as important and, and great of a game this week. Well, we'll be on statewide TV. That is <laughs> true. You. So it's got that going for it. And you know, the national platform that Bixby and Jenks have this week, uh, to show you how important that can be, four years ago when Bixby last 
uh, hosted a game or was on a game on national TV. It was against Booker T. Washington. And that was a breakout game for current OSU player Brendan Presley. Mm -hmm. And Brendan Presley, we all knew how great he was around here, but he wasn't getting hardly any recruiting notice at all. And it just bugged the heck out of me. Like, why aren't colleges offering him? And then all of a sudden he explodes for over 400 yards against a good Booker T. Washington team in that game. And all of a sudden the next morning, all right, the coaches are calling. So, <laughs> even, you know, you think that college, even college recruiters who should be on top of these things, uh, even without national TV, um, you know, when you see that occur, like what happened that night on national TV with Brendan Presley, that just shows you the impact it can have. So it's a huge opportunity for Bixby on Thursday night, but I'm looking forward to both the games. I'm planning on being at both of them. Barry, is, I know there's not really necessarily a Brennan Presley on, on the roster right now for, for either team, um, but is there anybody who this might be a good showcase for? Is there anybody on Jinx or Bixby who – is maybe a little under the radar, and maybe this might kind of spur some interest uh, re recruiting-wise. Well, it could. Uh, one player that pops to mind, um, well, if Jaden Carroll for Jenks had a big game, because I think he's a little under-recruited. Uh, I, I wouldn't say there's anyone right along the Brendan Presley, uh, who I thought was just like, oh, he's got to be a – the power conferences need to be in on him. Uh, I think Jaden Carroll, though, has been under-recruited. Um, Austin Havens, if he is a big night for Bixby, he's someone who I think could really help his recruiting stock as well. Um, Jenks receiver Ty Walls, who does have um, – he swept the service academies. They've all offered him. But I think uh, he would also be an intriguing prospect. So – uh, those are just a few of the guys that uh, could really help their uh, recruiting stock on Thursday night. All right, I'll ask you both this question. Uh, we'll start with you, Barry. Uh, the Jinx Bixby game comes down to what? Well, <laughs> I can say there's so many different storylines, but um, I think Jinx has got to run the ball and shorten the game. Uh, that's and Jenks couldn't run against Bixby last year, although was able to in this, you know, hang with Bixby. But uh, I think Jenks has got to run the ball, be able to run the ball. And they certainly can with they've got two great running backs, one of the best running back combinations in the state. So it's doable. And they just got to not beat themselves. You say that about every week against teams playing Bixby, you pretty well got to play a perfect game and you surely can't beat yourself with unforced turnovers or just stupid penalties. If you can stay disciplined and don't commit the horrible turnovers, unforced turnovers, um, you, you, could, you have a chance, especially if you're Bixby. I mean, Bix, I mean, especially if you're Jenks. Jenks is seven and two. I've got them as the fourth ranked team in the state. If they can play a perfect game and shorten the game, I think they've got a chance to at least compete better with Bixby than anyone has this year. And uh, I think Bixby's closest game is 35 points. So uh, I think that's definitely doable for Jenks. Uh, I think in going into the playoffs, if you're Jenks, you want to go in on a solid performance. So um, I think that, I think it's very doable for Jenks to at least give Bixby a good game. Dean, for you, this game comes down to what? So uh, I want to expand on what Barry said because I think he's right. You have to play as close to a perfect game as you can. And to me, what does that look like? Barry's right. You can't be turning the ball over. Don't be throwing bad throws that lead to interceptions because Bixby always capitalizes off those. And that capitalizes off it sets the offense in a good spot and they go score. No, Bixby's able to, like, return your interception for, for a touchdown like it's nothing. They're able to, you know – Force fumbles. If you're disciplined and you're in control of that ball, you can. And if you're able to string together long drives, move the chains, keep Bixby's defense out there, and just play disciplined football, you can win. 
Another aspect I think that kind of gets overlooked in terms of when you play Bixby, you have to win the special teams game. And I know it's kind of boring to talk about, but I think just about every week I read Bixby returned a punt for a touchdown. Bixby returned a kickoff for a touchdown. You don't want to be doing that. Contain kickoffs. You know, don't be fumbling on kickoffs. When you punt, you know, make sure you're, you're flipping the field. You know, Jinx has all these, these, these talented athletes, and they're able to do that. They're able to, you know, be smart, be disciplined. I think Keith Riggs is a very disciplined coach. I think that's big to him. Barry, correct me if I'm wrong there. But uh, you just need to play smart. You need to play to play. I guess, I guess what the right word would be is you need to play to – I, I don't know. You just you, you just want to stop what Bixby always capitalizes off. When why why you see Bixby putting up eighty to zero is because they capitalize off every little thing you do, and it's a lot harder to to say than do, in my opinion. You know, is when you say play smart football, you, you think that's an easy thing to do, but it's not. Especially when you're playing Bixby, who's can fly around the field and 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 hit you hard and and make you make a mistake. But that's what you need to do, I think, if you're Jinx and you want to come out and you want to win this game. And they've proved in the past two years to be able to keep it close. But now to capitalize and get that win, you just need to play smart football. And it's a lot harder said than done. Or it's a lot easier said than done. Yeah, unless, and I think um, but, uh, for Jenks, it needs to sort of follow the example. I think the blueprint for pulling off a big upset uh, was sort of shown last week when Sepulpa shocked McAllister. I think if going into that game, I think most people thought McAllister would have regarded them as probably a 14 to 21 point favorite. I mean, they were ranked number two uh, defending or last year's state runner up, Eric McCarty. I mean, the only team that had beaten them was Kawita and Kawita's number one. And so uh, I expected McAllister was going to roll at Sepulpa uh, last week, but um and Sepulpa had lost by 42 points to Del City uh, just a few weeks earlier. And uh, Del City's a team which McAllister beat by one point in overtime. So so I asked uh, Sepulpa's coach, Tim Holt Jr., what the key was. And it said, okay, first off, you, you can't be intimidated. He thought, he thought they went to Del City intimidated. Um, and you so you've got to be mentally strong, like, feel that you can win uh, and uh, I think Jenks will have that going to them with their winning tradition I feel that they feel that they can beat anybody so there is that and then you, for Sepulpa is also contain Eric McCarty yeah he's going to get his yardage but at least keep him from breaking big plays and for the most part with maybe one or two exceptions in the fourth quarter they were able to do that too and it's just that you know, just the mindset was just make everything hard for the other team. And that, I think, is the key. Just don't give stuff away. Just make everything that the other team gets hard to get. All right, guys, who are you picking in this game? Barry, you go first. Who am I picking? Did Bixby Jenks? I'm uh, picking Bixby. That's my philosophy is I'm not picking against Bixby until they lose. So it's, I got to pick Bixby all the way until the streak ends. That's I've learned my lesson from the past because I, I picked a Wasso in the season opener uh, against them. And uh, nope, I will not pick against Bixby again during this streak. Dean? You know, you probably got to say Bigsby, but I'll just have some fun. Why not? Uh, I'll say Jinx can can steal one. I think, I think you know, I, I, as a journalist, I've learned I don't root for teams. I root for stories. And I think the story of Ike Owens and what his career has been in high school at Jinx would be incredible. It, it'd be an incredible way to end his story if they beat Bigsby on national TV. With that said, it's probably Bixby. But I th I think the bigger question this week is will it be a competitive game? Can yeah. Jenks and I say competitive, can Jenks like even keep it to like a two-score game? Can I I think that would be 
even though there are no moral victories, <laughs> losses for Jenks, that's for sure, for a program that has that many state championships. I think if they could even keep it to two touchdowns or less for a margin, I think uh, that would give them huge confidence going forward in case they had to play Bixby again or when they play, as it looks like, uh, there could be a good chance they wind up playing Union in the playoffs. Stillwater, Muskogee, who you guys got? Dean, you go first. Uh, I'll, I'll probably go with the favorite here. I'll probably say Stillwater gets this one. Um, and that's not to take away anything from Muskogee because they're a really good team. And I, you know, I would look forward to hopefully an event eventual playoff matchup between the two of them. Um, but while it is going to be an away game for Stillwater, I think they've just got this season kind of figured out right now. I think they've, they've been able to to really – they've had their rhythm since the first week, whereas Muskogee's gradually grown into theirs. Um, so I think Stillwater probably takes care of this one. I could be wrong. Who knows? Uh, probably will be wrong. I'm not good at I'm not. I'm not a good predictor of what I've learned this year in, uh, when it comes to high school sports. Uh, but I, th- I think Muskogee keeps it close. I- I'll predict it's a close game, but I think Stillwater probably ekes out a win here. I'm going to go with Muskogee just because it just, even though on paper it looks like you should, I should be picking Stillwater, I just think this is like a special year for Muskogee, so I'm going to go with the Ruffers. Guys, they were winless two years ago, and now they're on the verge of a perfect regular season. I mean, that's – Pretty, pretty impressive accomplishment. So you're, you're yeah, right. It, sh- it shows you how quickly, I mean, it doesn't often happen. Things don't awful, uh, often turn like that. And, of course, you've got the flip side with Santa Fe was in the championship game two years ago, and they're winless this year, despite five of their nine games being one-score games. So that's pretty incredible to me. Um because most winless teams are pretty woeful and get blown out every week. But Edmund Santa Fe, five of their nine losses are by one score. And think about it. They have held both both Owasso and Jenks to 13 points. That's incredible. <laughs> and yet they're 0-9. An 0-9 team holding both, you know, powerhouses like Owasso and Jenks to 13 points. <laughs> what a luckless season. It's, it's yeah, it's it's incredible. So uh, let's talk about some other teams. Um, last week in the regular season, uh, who really needs a win this week, Barry? We'll start with you, Barry. We'll we'll come to you, Dean, here in a second. Well, um, Holland Hall, two-time defending three A state champion, they've got the longest winning streak in their district at four after an zero and five start, mm-hmm. and so on paper it looks like they're sitting in really good shape. But they very well could need a win at Jay this week. And Jay's a dangerous team. They could very well need a win to get into the playoffs. Um, I'm trying to think. I last all last all yesterday or last night at least, I was doing all the playoff scenarios, which you can put find at okayprepsextra.com. So I'm just trying to go through those in my mind after 44 districts or so that sort of get jumbled up. <laughs> um I sort of run together, but also um Glenpool and McAllister. Glenpool, I mean, it's strange to say McAllister, as good as they've been, if McAllister does not win, that loss at Sepulpa really sort of complicates things for McAllister. If McCall, if McAllister loses to Glenpool, McAllister probably is not going to be in the playoffs. So hard, I, hard to believe. I mean, McAllister should win that game, but after losing to Sepulpa last week, uh, they cast a little seed of doubt. So uh, McAllister's got to bring their A game. And in a similar situation is Vanita, a team that we've talked about all year long. Um, Been really, really good. They're 7-2, and just like McAllister, but they're in a situation, if some other scenarios play out, where if they lose to Salina, which is 5-4, and then Vanita will miss out on the playoffs. And then um, Uliga, McLean at Uliga is pretty much, uh, will probably decide a playoff berth. Yeah, there's some uh, 
other scenarios in play, but uh, pretty well that will decide a playoff berth, it looks like. Hey, Dean, I almost forgot to mention this, but um, why don't you tease a little bit for us your interview with Todd Drummond you had uh, last night. You recorded it last night. We'll, 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 uh, we'll throw it out there probably, you know, probably tomorrow maybe. Uh, just don't give away too much, but uh, how'd that go? See, yeah, it was great. I, uh, Todd is a, is a, he's a smart kid, you know, and, and you love talking with those guys and, and swapping stories with them. And what really interested me or, or what I found great was, was he's kind of a, he's kind of quick witted. He, he doesn't mind throwing a joke out there. Maybe, you know, he'll laugh at his own expense sometimes. And so that's always a great quality to me is when somebody, you know, you got to be able to laugh at yourself. And so he shared some great stories, um, obviously, with his mom, the pioneer woman. You know, we, we chatted on that. Um, he had some great stuff to say about Paul Huska just this season. Uh, we talked about recruitment a little bit. You know, he's going to South Dakota. He shared what was important about him there and, and what, you know, they did to separate themselves or separate them from other schools recruiting him. So, th so there's just some great stuff uh, in there. You know, he told me, actually, here's, here's my teaser to get people to watch. <laughs> he almost never played football. He was a soccer kid. His older brother, Bryce, who Barry knows. I've never met Bryce. Um, Bryce was two years older than him. Right, Barry? Or three yes, years? Yes, yeah, two. Yeah. Two years older than him. So, so in Paul Huska, I guess they couldn't play tackle football until third grade. So while Bryce was in third grade, uh, Todd was in first grade, and they said he could play up and go play with Bryce. Todd said it was the worst year of his football career. He kept getting hit. He was undersized. He said he almost said, forget about this. I'm just playing soccer. And we now see where he is. So everybody check that out. It's great. Todd was a great conversation. Um, and yeah, give it a listen. Yeah, your uh your player interviews have been have have been really good this year. So um all right, guys, unless someone has some final thoughts, we'll cut it off right there. Barry, well, you got I've, to I've got a final thought. I want to thank everyone, all those who came out to our Tulsa World Winter Sports Photo Day last Wednesday at Union. So we had a really good turnout. And so I wanted to thank Union High School and Emily, Athletic Director Emily Barkley and her staff for hosting it. And wanted to thank all those who participated and uh, took some time out of their day last Wednesday to come out. And uh, again, it was, a, it was a successful event and very important for us in our coverage of high school athletics. So thank you. Uh, and just to recap, so Bixby and Jinx are on Thursday night. Uh, and then a, uh, the larger complement of the games Friday night. Bear, are we going to have playoff scenarios on our website kind of late Friday night? Or are, least, are the playoff pairings, the unofficial pairings at least? Uh, yeah, that, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that is the goal. Uh, or maybe it'd be to better say early Saturday morning because it'll probably be after midnight, okay. at least for the full complement of them, which, and again, they – OSSA, I mean, some of those can be so complicated. Even the OSSA has posted some wrong pairings in the past <laughs> just because they've misread the tiebreaker. Someone has typed something in wrong to their official standings and OSSA rankings because I've noticed there's a few teams who's got some things wrong, and that's what OSSA uh, bases their pairings off of. So it can be complicated, but uh, usually at the very least, you've got 98% of them right. So, because uh, even that's about as good as even the OSSA does on their initial draft. So, um, anyway, we will have those uh, sometime after midnight uh, on Friday night slash Saturday morning. All right, guys. Appreciate the knowledge as always. We'll catch up next week. Thanks, guys. All right. Sounds good. Thanks.